guys, it's Sunik Matua, and today I'm going to talk about animation apps on the iPad. Now, the Procreate Dreams app was recently announced, and it's a huge, big step for Procreate. Not only are they adding animation add-ons, but you're going to be able to fully composite animated projects from moving characters to moving backgrounds, put it all together, and the whole user experience looks user-friendly. So when that comes out, you bet your asses that I'm going to give that a shot. Now, I've been exploring animation on the iPad for quite a while using many different apps here and there, and I'm just gonna talk about my current experience and the current landscape with that. So I need to remind you guys that the way I use my iPad, especially when it comes to drawing and art, is that I treat it more like a sketchbook more than anything. When I want to make full-on productions, I usually keep that side to my full workstation at home. When I animate on the iPad, I usually just keep it at the rough animation stage. That's just how I use the iPad. I've seen different people whip out fully finished productions using the iPad alone but I already have a working system on my own desktop. Now, when Procreate Dreams comes out, will that change things? Maybe, I don't know, it's too early to say. Now, a few points about this video. It's not an app review video where I talk about different apps and say this was the best, this was the worst, etc. It's really me exploring different apps, what I look for in an app as an animator, something that I could use in my workflow. Whether that's making a fully finished film just on the iPad or just adding it to my workflow in my overall bigger pipeline. Like I said, rough animating on it and cleaning it up later on the desktop. So many of you will say, hey, Procreate actually has an animation assist, an animation add-on, a timeline. I've used it, and as an animator, I found it quite cumbersome. The way it works, it's kind of similar to Clip Studio, where each layer is its own frame. If you wanted to, a folder with multiple layers can represent a single frame. But this kind of makes it quite cumbersome because let's say I have a background and I want to reuse it for multiple frames. I have to duplicate elements of that background into these folders again and again. And if you're an animator that likes to flip, tough. It's going to be really cumbersome if you try to do that here. For the rough animation stage where each layer represents a frame, that's easy to do. But let's say you introduce folders and let's say each folder has the rough drawing, the clean line art, the colors, and then you try to flip back and forth via the animation timeline, it's going to go, oh no, you didn't select the drawing, you only selected the folder. And if you wanted to flip back and forth, you have to independently manually tap those layers. And that's why I started looking elsewhere for animation features on the iPad because Procreate wasn't really fulfilling that animator itch for me. So I went on a quest exploring through different animation apps I could find on the iPad. Some were fun, some were cute, some were okay, some were really glitchy and not a great experience. There are apps similar to Procreate like Fresco that also has their own animation timeline. But the thing that I noticed between Procreate and Adobe Fresco's animation timelines is that they feel more like afterthoughts. Something I noticed is that there's a lot of animation apps that have a basic flipbook feel to it and it feels very friendly and appealing to many people, but they don't really feel like apps that were made by animators that other animators could use, whether it's for their own work or for a production. To me, they feel more like animator simulators rather than this is an animation program that I as an animator could use for my own work. But does this mean that you can't make amazing things with these apps? Absolutely not, because there's many people who've made great things using these types of apps. And that's where the creativity part shines. But hey, maybe you came here to find animation apps on the iPad that are user-friendly or friendly to seasoned animators. Maybe you're someone that wants to get started into learning and doing animation, and you just want to start with an iPad. Maybe this video can help. As I look at a few that are worth talking about, so the first one I want to talk about is Flip a Clip, and Flip a Clip is a very popular flipbook style animation app on the iPad. Now, I will kind of say that this falls in the borderline of this is a cute gimmicky animation simulator app that's more fun than I could use in a production pipeline, but another way you could view it as is a simple flipbook style animation app, like I said earlier. So it strips away some of the complexities you can find in a normal 2D animation app, like how long each drawing holds for, how many frames, tracking all these multiple layers. 
in other words, it's really basic, but its simplicity, it's also its strength because it kind of removes all the things that might be a bit too overwhelming or too complex at first. And it just gets you started into the groove of just making things flipbook style, making images move frame by frame. It's user friendly. When I used it, I had a lot of fun with it and I can see why a lot of beginning animators jump into Flip a Clip first. I think animator Havsta uses this for their own animated projects. I had a lot of fun using it, drawing it feels good. I did a straight ahead animation test, which was a lot of fun. And I did another test, which was more pose and pose, which is a bit more limited, but I could still suffice. If you're a beginning animator, you just want to get started, but don't want to be bombarded with all of these complicated features that appear in normal 2D animation programs, this might be worth it because again, I'm thinking about the user experience on the iPad. The iPad has a UI that allows you to work on your lap, on the go, and has a lot of touchscreen features. So it has to appeal to that. And I think Flip a Clip does. So if you want to animate just for the sake of animating and not have any file breaking glitches, this could be worth it. So now we're moving into the territory of, is this an app that an animator could use for their own work? And the first one I want to talk about is an app that I have the most experience with, which is called Rough Animator. If you've used 2D animation software in the past, and if you just look at the user interface for Rough Animator, it's super easy to get into. You have a timeline with multiple layers. You can even set the opacity for these layers. There's buttons and settings for the onion skin. And there's also these arrows that you can press where you can actually flip between drawings, not independent frames, but different drawings, which is super good. As the name suggests, it's great for doing rough animation, but I think that's enough if you're just on the go and you just want to animate roughly. And then you can export it as a movie sequence or even an image sequence, you know, save that export it and then import it to your desktop and you can clean it up from there. So I think for me, this app was great for animation on the go. It's an app that has its necessities, but it doesn't contain all the animation stuff that I would really want in an animation app. So for example, uh, Shift and Trace, which is this ability to actually change the orientation of your onion skin to see your previous drawing and your next drawing, shift that around so you can make it match proportions here and there. Rough Animator has that, and spoiler alert, the next few apps that I'm going to talk about don't have that either. Not that I know of. But hey, I've used Rough Animator the most because for me, it's super simple to get into, it's easy to read. The only big criticism I have for it is really with the timeline and the layers because when you're, let's say, making new drawings or making new frames and making new layers, it has this weird synchronization system with the layers that I don't really agree with and it just makes things just a tiny bit more cumbersome. It's hard to explain it vocally. You'll have to actually use it to see what I mean. But if you're familiar with animation on 2D and you've used animation software in the past, I think this one's a good one. The next one I want to talk about is called Toon Squid. And Toon Squid, holy crap, this one is a good one. And the reason why I sound surprised here is because no one really knows about it or no one really talks about it. It gets overshadowed by another app called Calipeg, which I'll get into later. But for now, I just want to highlight Toon Squid. So the way I would summarize Toon Squid is, let's say you try to make a version of Adobe Animate or Adobe Flash into the iPad, but made it way more user friendly, made it design the user interface so it's easy to get into. And dare I say, it's kind of like a really good spiritual successor to Adobe Flash and Animate because I feel like Adobe Animate kind of went downhill, but this one feels like it took out all the clunkiness from those apps, condensed it, and made it a pretty good iPad app. Now, the reason also why I compare it to Adobe Animate and Adobe Flash is because they actually have a library system for symbols. So for those who don't know what that is, let's say you animate different mouth shapes or different assets that you can reuse again and again, you can actually store it as symbols and reuse them later on in another frame or another scene. And something that pleasantly surprised me is that not only do they have a timeline with layers, but each frame has multiple layers on its own. In the main timeline, you can just have one layer that represents the character animation, but in a frame on that layer, you can have multiple layers featuring the rough drawings, the cleanup, and then the color. 
It also has keyframe capabilities. So let's say you have a character that has a loop of a walk cycle. Instead of having to move the character frames independently, you can actually get that loop and then just drag it across the screen and it'll automatically create a pathway for that. And this can also be applied to camera moves too. Like if I went to produce a simple animated film using this app alone, this could be it. So yeah, I can see myself using this for a rough animation, but eventually, and if I really, really wanted to, I could probably make a little short using this app. Now, the main criticism I have with this one is that flipping doesn't feel as good as, let's say, Rough Animator. I don't think flipping is there yet for this one. The way it works is that you flip by scrubbing three fingers on the screen up and down. But from my experience, it was pretty sensitive. Maybe there's a way to set that up, but it kind of feels weird where I kind of have to like track the movement of my fingers just to sort of have a drawing that I need to preview. But I will say that this is a far underestimated app that other animators should probably check out. So the next one I want to talk about and probably the last one I'm going to talk about is Calipig. Now, I was following this app during its development and they would show how the app looked like, how it worked, the features that they had for it, and it looked really appealing for an animator such as I. Like to me, it just looked like an iPad version of TV Paint, which is my main go-to animation program. So it's out now and a lot of my friends who have used it or who do use it, they do like it, they really recommend it and they had an overall good time with it. So, you know, their experience is their experience. And so I'm going to talk about my experience with it. I think it's a very promising app, but the thing is that I just couldn't get into it because for me, it was a bit too complicated for its own good. Like there's a lot of buttons for it, a lot of symbols, and you kind of have to highlight what each of them do. And another thing is that there's a lot of like finger gesture or finger guns that you might need to know just to do basic stuff like flipping. And to me, when apps start to do that, that's a turn off for me since I can see myself forgetting those combinations. Now, another thing is that maybe Calipec wasn't working well for me because sometimes I would experience glitches where I couldn't really adjust the frames myself or something happened and in order for me to use it, I had to be connected to the internet. Maybe it was an update that it was lacking or it needed to, you know, rebuff or whatever. But after playing with it, I think there's a lot of opportunities and capabilities that this app has. It's pretty advanced, but there's a lot of things that even a hobbyist or a professional animator could appreciate from this app. But for someone like me, who's a simpleton when it comes to using the iPad, I will usually just go for Rough Animator or Toon Squid just because the features in Calipeg do overwhelm me. And I do remember it was the most expensive out of these apps that I talked about. Now there's a bunch of other 2D animation apps that I've touched with the iPad, but I didn't really feel like they were worth talking about just because they kept breaking my file, it kept crashing, it kept glitching out, and they were more of the same, or some just felt like, yeah, this is just another animation fun simulator type of app. When it comes to 2D animation apps on the iPad, I still feel like it's quite rocky or they're a bit behind just because, and this is my suspicion, I think it's because they aren't as, you know, supportive or they don't reach out as much as something like Procreate where they're always addressing what the community needs, what the artist wants, what they need. There's always that constant feedback. For the other apps, there's not really a community for them. So I'm pretty curious to what Procreate Dreams has to offer for, you know, future filmmakers or 2D animators using their app. But I also have to be careful because I'm also maybe inserting my own biases of what makes the perfect animation app and Procreate has their own decisions of why they designed their animation functionalities the way they did. But if it makes 2D animation way more accessible to a lot more people, that's great. I mean, this is what democratizing art is all about, right? Making it more accessible, giving tools for people to actually develop and finesse their own skills, not using AI or stable division as an excuse to democratize art. And the reason why I want Procreate to do well is because they're very, very vocal about being anti-AI and just for the artists. So when Dreams comes out, maybe I'll finally give it a try. But for now, you know, these are my experiences with other animation apps. I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.